Hi, uh, my name is Yoshinori uh, Matsunobu. So I am a uh, tech lead of the MySQL team and uh, production engineer at uh, Meta. So those who don't know, the uh, Meta, the company name, I used to work at Facebook, the company, for over 10 years. That company name changed to Meta uh, for supporting a uh, Metaverse. But uh, what we are doing, doing these days uh, don't change at all. So, I saw, so this is my first public talk after a company name changed. So like many of you, so this is, I haven't spoken at public conferences since uh, last COVID. So yeah, but it's, uh, sometimes I often may mistakenly use the word Facebook, but uh, it's basically the same meaning. So don't worry about that. So this time I'm talking, uh, I'm, in this presentation, I'm going to talk about RocksDB. So RocksDB is an open source uh, key value store the, like uh, supporting, compared to B-Tree, it's, uh, it's structure, it's called uh, LSM, Log Structure Merge Tree. So how many people, uh, have you ever used RocksDB in productions or not? Okay, not many, so. No, uh, just RocksDB. Uh, RocksDB or MyRox? Yeah, RocksDB or MyRox. Yes. Okay, not many. So then I, I'm going to spend uh, time for uh, RocksDB overview and the differences between B3, LSM and B3, and uh, briefly introduced about the performance practices of the reliability practices. But uh, the key takeaway will be uh, what uh, benefits RocksDB gives, gives to you. So what is RocksDB? So RocksDB is an open source LSM, the Rock Structure Merge database. Uh, originally, it was created by Google, so named as a RebelDB. And about it's eight or ten, nine years ago, so the people in Facebook uh, forked RebelDB and created uh, RocksDB. So it, it's a permanent fork and added a bunch of features for uh, server side. So uh, processing like uh, parallel compactions or current families, uh, kind of table space or transaction support. And uh, so it's a uh, embedded database and key value stores. And LSM database, it's normally is opti very optimized for space. So it supports compressions, almost all compression algorithms like uh, ZSD standard, LZ4, so these are all supported. So it's, it's very well uh, saving space. So that was a primary reason the why uh, we created a storage engine called MyRox, which is a basically a MySQL on RocksDB. So like in the DB, so it's a, it's a storage engine. So yeah, the RocksDB is open source, and MyRox is one of the use cases. So we MyRox is open source, and uh, we use MyRox in uh, to replace in the DB for a bunch of our uh, production workloads. But RocksDB itself, it's, uh, you can use uh, without depending on MyRox or my, even MySQL. So it, it's used many backend services at Meta and uh, many external services like Netflix and se several vendors like uh, TidyDB or Yugabyte. So uh, these run on top of RocksDB. So there may be, uh, there are many databases or backend services that uh, depending on the RocksDB. And major use cases inside uh, the company, the Meta, is uh, we have two major databases on top of RocksDB. So one is a MyRox, so it's a MySQL uh, storage engine. So uh, it's basically replacing uh, InnoDB to MyRox, so with the same clients. So people can still use SQL to over to uh, MyRox. And the uh, underlying storage is replaced from a B3 InnoDB to LSM RocksDB. Uh, another major use case uh, at Meta is uh, called ZPDB. So unfortunately, this is not, ZPDB is not open source. So ZPDB is a distributed key value store so, uh, on top of RocksDB. So it's kind of uh, Amazon DynamoDB, so distributed uh, NoSQL key value store, but underlying storage is uh, RocksDB. So there is a paper about ZPDB. So it, even though it's not open source, so you may have uh, several ideas about why we built that. So this is a, a general workflow architecture of the how write requests uh, work in RocksDB. 
So when you issue write request, uh, internally the Slock CV has an API called put. So if you uh, issue a write request called put or delete, then it's written to a uh, uh, write head log, so which is a persistent storage, similar to read log. Uh, and it's also written to a mem in memory data structures called mem uh, mem table. So the put or delete, so it's uh, stored in the write ahead log and mem table. And when mem tables is accumulated, and when mem tables gets full, then it's f uh, switching to a next mem table, and it is also flushed to a data file. So there are many data files called SST, the sorted string table. And if there are many SST files, there's another process called compaction that uh, takes place and uh, compacting many SST files or data files uh, into a more optimal format. So, and compaction keeps happening and uh, keeping the space uh, relatively optimal compared to a B3 database. But it, LSM database is often called a light optimized database because uh, on the B3 case, uh, when issue a write request, uh, it's updated in place. So you have to read the page uh, and if it's not cached, then you have to read from a disk. So normally, uh, in RAB, light, uh, light throughput decreases if there are many indexes, uh, because you have to read from a database page. And if not cached, if you have to read from disk. So light, uh, light performance slows down the, with the, if the data size grows bigger. But LSM database, it's, uh, you don't have to read from a uh, uh, SST file unless uh, you need to check a unique key constraint. So write request, uh, for, like, uh, for example, secondary keys, just you update the mem memory. So you don't have to read from uh, files. So that's why it is often called light optimized database, uh, as well as a, a space, uh, saving space. But apparently so it has started off. So it, actually, it's a, LSM is not a drop in replacement of the B3. So uh, the <laughs> LSM database generally is more uh, slower than B3 for handling read, perform, uh, read queries. So here is how the read request works. So most uh, recent data may exist in the mem table. So read request checks the mem table. And mem table may have uh, some uh, active mem table and passive mem tables that may not have been flushed yet. So you have to, Rocksafe has to check them. And if data doesn't exist, it, ha it has to check a block cache. So it's uh, similar to InnoDB buffer pool. And it has uh, several structures, but the data is stored in the data block. And if the cache is not found, so you have to read from uh, files. And actually, the Rocksafe has a structure called level, so which is that's, uh, forked from level DB. So th that's why <coughs> it was called a level. Uh, so, Rocksafe has uh, several labels, and uh, each label have uh, sorted data. So almost all data is stored in the bottommost levels. Uh, in this case, it's a level four, uh, having a size, about, say, about one terabyte. So the most data is stored in level four, and uh, about one-tenth of data is stored in the upper level, the so level three. And the one-tenth of the level three data is stored in level two, so something like that. And by accumulating them, the aggregated size is about 111% per, uh, of the level four. So it's called a space amplification as 1.111. So it's much smaller than B3. So B3 space amplification is about 1.5 uh, because of the fragmentations. So compared to B3, it saves uh, space much more. But as a trade-off, when you issue a read request, and if data doesn't exist, then you have to read from uh, all levels. So that's a much bigger overhead. And uh, especially the overhead is bigger so if you need to issue uh, range scans. So there are trade-offs. So, so you cannot replace, uh, simply replace P3 to LSM uh, if you, your workload is very read uh, heavy. Yeah. Instead, the light, light, uh, light and space are pretty optimized. So we added a bunch of features to uh, RocksDB, uh, primarily for supporting uh, uh, InnoDB to RocksDB migrations. Uh, we did that about five years ago. So we 
added a bunch of features, but also we added several other features for supporting another the key value store use case called the PDB. So column family is, is a kind of a table space. Uh, so there are many different characteristics. So the Facebook use case is uh, Facebook has a large social graphs. And uh, we have two major data structures called uh, Facebook objects and associations. So object means like comment or uh, like uh, you post something or the, the activities. And uh, aso ASOC, it's called associations. Association is more like people's interactions. Like if you like somebody's post, uh, if, if you like some uh, friend's post, then that action is uh, recorded as that, uh, in, you know, they, uh, Looks a bit, or in a way, the MySQL record. Like uh, ID1 people with ID1 liked ID2's uh, post. So these uh, uh, associations are stored in the called, called table called ASOX. And if you write a comment, that comment itself is stored as a com uh, comment ID is assigned, and the comment object is stored in a different table called uh, object. So these are very different uh, data structures, and we wanted to differentiate these two types because uh, uh, the characteristics are very different. Right? So that's why we uh, had a column family to differentiate them. So that's one of the use case. And uh, originally, the first version of the RocksDB didn't support transactions. So in very initial version of the My, uh, MyRox is that we added transaction support in the MyRox layers. But then we realized that there are many more uh, use cases beyond uh, My MySQL, uh, like ZPDB or uh, external use cases. So we pushed uh, the transaction support in, inside RocksDB. So now the RocksDB supports transactions, which is called transaction DB. And uh, we, so we don't use that, but uh, it has uh, another uh, database called uh, BlobDB. Actually, you can combine uh, BlobDB and transaction DB, but the BlobDB is more like uh, handling large blob. So, which is a kind of anti-pattern of uh, using MySQL, right? So that's why we don't use that. But uh, uh, you can uh, you store the blob in the RocksDB database co uh, called a BlobDB. And TTLDB is uh, ti uh, time to live uh, features, like after like 30 days, the data is wiped. So uh, it's a bit complex to handle to, uh, in regular MySQL. But with RocksDB, it's, uh, it's relatively uh, simple to handle that. And generally, the LSM database heavily depending on the Bloom filters. I'll talk a bit more about it later. But one of the key features for RocksDB is you can define the prefix Bloom filters. Like, uh, we support it for MyRox. Like, MySQL use cases, we do a lot, lots of range scans. And uh, range scans uh, happen with, like, uh, uh, Suppose you have a table with ID and ID, ID1 and ID2 or different type or something, and you, you should uh, query only the first column, like where ID calls something, order by ID2 or something like that. So if you're only a part of the uh, keys, uh, we still wanted to use Bloom filters. Uh, then the prefix Bloom filter is, uh, is contributing that area. Uh, delete range and single delete uh, is a bit complex uh, topic, but uh, it's more like optimized deletions. Uh, I can talk if I have time uh, later. And uh, backup, so, uh, and, and the, probably the most reliability uh, related topic is the most configuration parameters uh, can be changed online. So that's a uh, very uh, key features for us to uh, change configurations in productions without stopping or restarting services. So the LSM versus P3, uh, so this was uh, the really the fundamental topics when we considered uh, migrating from InnoDB to RocksDB. So in very high level, the LSM saves space and the uh, light performance is it's generally faster, but it's slower for reads. So that's a very key uh, differences. And uh, saving space was really fundamental for us for our biggest database called the uh, UDB, the user's database at uh, uh, Meta, the Facebook. So it's uh, basically uh, contributed by two reasons. One is the uh, fragmentations. So B3 fragmentations overhead is about 50% in the worst case. But uh, LSM overhead was 
only about 11%. So that's difference was big. Plus, the LSM database works very well with compressions. So in the AB compression, it's actually, the, it doesn't save space much. So it saves space about 50%. So that's still great, but it cannot save beyond that. So but, uh, good com uh, compressions can save space by like 25% or so. So it, it, the aggregated space saving was much bigger uh, with better compressions. So actually, so we published a, a paper at VLDB uh, database uh, conference uh, two years ago. So that paper uh, discusses a bunch of topics about the uh, UDB uh, migration stories to MyRox. So actual space savings in our production was about 60%. Uh, compared to a compressed in AB. So that space saving was huge. So that was the primary reason uh, to migrate for us. And uh, lower light amplifications, which was uh, good for uh, flash. So, yes. So getting the space saving around 50% really good for any data from the pictures and just from mastering the higher possible. Yeah, the, I can talk about that uh, okay. uh, in this. But yes, so lower light amplification is, is generally good for uh, cheaper storage because the flash has light cycles. But, and the slower read performance, yes, so slower read performance means it may use more CPU to handle the same amount of queries. So actually we spent substantial time to uh, mitigate, <laughs> mitigate or the, it, it, it's, technically it's really, hard to beat InnoDB because InnoDB is a really good uh, V3 database. Uh, at Meta's uh, company, so we, we have a, a large cache in front of MySQL, so which is called Tao, uh, which is a huge record cache. And so the, actually the cache hit rate is pretty good. So there are not many uh, read queries coming to the uh, user database. So that's actually made migrations quite easier. But even uh, without cache, so if you uh, can mitigate the read performance, uh, or if you have a very small read queries, then it's uh, pretty feasible to migrate to a ROXDB. Yes. Uh, you spoke about reducing write amplification. Yes. So we just from the active memory table to the from yeah. the memory table to the yes. memory file. Yes. Uh, but then at every level, it gets further compacted. So. Okay, so the, and the difference between B3 and the LSM is B3 is called LSM, uh, updated in place. So typical in the size is 16 kilobytes. So even if you change one record or the one column, the entire page becomes dirty. Okay. Right. So the write amplification can be as big as a 16K plus double write, so 32K. Uh, compared to that, the LSM is, LSM uh, is accumulating the, in the memory table, so it has about like uh, 100 or 200 megabytes. Uh, that accumulating, then writing to file in batch. And it's also the file buffers uh, multiple SSD files. So then that triggers compaction data. So it has certain periods for buffering changes. So then in, uh, by comparison, then uh, Roxy-B's write amplification is, it, it's almost always uh, multiple times uh, smaller than the B3. Yeah, so generally, uh, back to the topic, the uh, performance. So the read performance is generally slower, so uh, we have to do a benchmark for that. But, and in addition to that, the write performance, so it's heavily depending on the how you issue writes. But talking about MyLog, so we migrate from InnoDB. So InnoDB has a, apparently has a unique key constraint for the primary key, so we had, have the same. So the unique constraint means that you have to read from a database to see that if the key exists or not. So, so any insert into primary key has to read. Uh, that read is slower than uh, in DB. So, so if the table has only primary keys, actually our benchmark showed the MyRox insert uh, was slightly slower than in DB insert because of the uh, unique key check overhead. But if there are many secondary indexes, then the MyLogs became more f uh, faster because the secondary key maintenance uh, doesn't need to uh, read reading from that uh, pages. So that's heavily depending on the uh, table designs. And 
In addition to that, so several, many Rocksavy customers actually don't have, uh, check a uniqueness. So it, I, I agree, so it's heavily depending on the use cases, but if you don't check uniqueness, uh, the, the insert throughput is much bigger. Uh, if I have topics, uh, uh, time, so I, I can discuss later, but the uh, major difference between the DB is, okay. Okay. So the Rocksavy is key value store. So the, if you use purely uh, just Rocksavy, then you don't have table. It's a, it's a key value store. So you can just uh, write uh, any keys without checking the uniqueness. So it's basically overwriting. Yeah. And the MyRox case is, MyRox is more like a relational database. So we define a unique key for that. Yes. So the major difference but the InnoDB is uh, InnoDB has a very unique feature called uh, gap log, the so next key log. So that is a uh, uh, very interesting feature, and uh, but RocksDB doesn't support that, or as a database like uh, Postgres doesn't support either. So that made uh, migrations uh, a bit tricky. So I'd like to discuss this topic when I have time later. So the RocksDB performance practices. So Actually, when using Rocksavy in production, so there are several uh, interesting uh, things to keep in mind. But uh, uh, several topics I, I'd like to discuss is a memory allocator and uh, Rocksavy data format, and uh, how the important to keep them in memory, and the compactions and compressions. So, first of all, uh, most of the, uh, the Meta, the inside case, uh, is you, we are using a memory allocator called JMROC. So actually, memory allocator quite matters from performance perspective. Uh, part of the reason is RocksDB block. Uh, like in the so RocksDB has a block. But uh, actually, uh, the RocksDB block is not strictly aligned to a uh, 4 kilobyte, 8 kilobyte. So the block size is a bit uh, slightly smaller or bigger uh, than the actual 4 kilobyte or 8 kilobyte or 16 kilobyte because the data is compressed. Uh, so that uh, makes the memory allocator much more important. So we, we use JMROC because the uh, original JMROC creator was working at uh, uh, Facebook. So we use that. Uh, there are many other memory allocators like uh, Google's uh, TCMROC or other uh, ZLFCs. And uh, actually, I don't think we uh, benchmarked anything other than JMROC. <laughs> so generally, we recommend uh, using it. So Rocksdb has a file, uh, data file called SSD file. And the SSD file has a three uh, major uh, data uh, characteristics. One is a data block, so it stores actual data. And the filter means a Bloom filters. That is another important one. And uh, the last part is called an index block. So index block is a pointer or offset to each data block. So as I said, the data block size in Rocksavy is not strictly aligned to four kilobytes. So like 3,900 or something. So, so that's why we need a size, uh, uh, the offset for each data block. So that's a trade-off between the saving space or, uh, or uh, performance. But anyway, yes, but the compression, yes, each, each data block is compressed, but the compression it, uh, happens uh, at the uh, SSD file level. So it space, saves space better, but uh, the side effect, uh, the data block, it's not aligned. So that's a trade-off. So, but anyway, so the index block points to a data uh, data blocks and the filters to the Bloom filters. So from a memory usage perspective, so keeping the filter and the index in memory is really important. But uh, we ha we tried that several uh, configurations like uh, changing the uh, Rocksdb block size to a uh, 16 to 4 kilobytes. So then if uh, changing a block size smaller then it improves performance because it needs to decompress small bytes. But uh, as a side effect, the index block is, gets much bigger because the, there are many uh, more blocks and each block needs an uh, offset. So 
it, it trades off. Uh, so the, the one of the practice is keeping the filtered uh, index block cache uh, to be cached in memory. So we have several uh, metrics to show that how many uh, uh, index or filters are used in memory. So in, in MyLock's case, we have an information schema that exposes uh, actual uh, like uh, data block size or index size or filter size. So this is one of the productions. So gigabyte size, the data size is about one terabyte, but the index uh, filters are about, in total, it's about 4.5 gigabytes. So that's relatively small enough to cache in memory. So uh, there are several uh, ways to tune that. So another important memory topic is uh, using direct I.O. So actually, I, uh, we Originally, Rockstar, we didn't support direct I.O., but uh, we uh, added support for that. So that, that really made a difference. So uh, buffered I.O. uses substantial memory so in the Linux kernel, so which is called slab memories. So uh, better memory efficiency and lower system CPU with direct I.O. So uh, by switching to direct I.O., we, we could gain that. So that, that was, uh, that's why we supported uh, uh, direct I.O. in Rockstar. Uh, that's uh, there are several uh, options to use that. It's off by default, but I heavily recommend using that. Uh, another, uh, the, from comp compression point of view, so one of the interesting uh, compression feature in Rockstar is, is that you can mix the different compression algorithm. So you cannot do that with uh, InnoDB. But uh, in Rockstar, the most almost all data, like ninety percent of the data, is stored in the bottommost, in the lowest level. So we use the strongest uh, compression algorithm, like GSTD, here. But on the higher levels, so there are more data is written to higher levels. So we use uh, faster compressions, so like LZ4, or even no compression, so for higher levels. So that uh, saves space, uh, so, sorry, that uh, saves uh, CPUs for that. Yeah. So from a Compaction is another part. So one of the pain points of the uh, compaction is when you migrate large chunks of data, then a uh, bunch of compaction happening. So when issuing write requests, so as I said, it's written to write ahead log and mem table. The mem table flashed and the compaction happening, happening. And that increases the write amplification. Uh, there is a feature called a bulk loading, so which is called SST file writer API. So when you migrate from a, like InnoDB or restoring from backups or some, if you have a guarantee that data is already sorted, then there is a way to directly uh, store it into the bottommost levels, which is called a level max file. So it, it has a requirement that it's user responsibility to that uh, data is already sorted and that there is no overlapping uh, key ranges in between. But if you guarantee that, then th that's a really fast way to st store data. Uh, Bloom filter, the, I talked a bit, but uh, Bloom filter size is, can, uh, is also very important to, for performance. And uh, in general, it's recommended to have Bloom filter in memory. But for very large database, uh, if you Bloom, have Bloom filter everywhere, then Bloom filter size may exceed the memory. So we have an option that uh, to about which levels should have Bloom filters. So uh, most of our production have a uh, uh, skip starting Bloom filter in the level max because uh, if having a Bloom filter in level max, it exceeds the memory. Uh, so that's one, uh, one area that we optimize that. And uh, we have several other features, but uh, probably the most interesting one is uh, called prefix Bloom filters. So uh, you can, uh, use a range scan and still use Bloom filter. So most of the Bloom filter is for point lookups uh, to see that if the key doesn't exist or not in the SSD file. But uh, with prefix Bloom filters, you can do that for range scans as well. Yeah. Uh, so from performance perspectives, uh, especially for uh, slower leads, then the most slow performance is coming uh, by uh, deletions. So it, this is a very common problem for uh, LSM database, but here's how the deletion works. So 
suppose that you store the five records, put one, two, three, four, five, and the, you delete uh, four of them, like delete, delete it one, two, three, four. And uh, just after that, you scan the uh, uh, table. Then this query should return just one record, right? Uh, because uh, one, two, three, four was deleted. So only five is existing in the table. So uh, this query returns a, a count one. But internally, uh, it has to scan the five uh, key values because the deletions are stored in the table uh, five. So these deletions cannot disappear immediately because uh, same uh, put, uh, the deletions have to delete, uh, remove the list put, but the put may exist in the uh, bottommost level. So until reaching the bottommost level, the, the list deletions cannot be disappeared. So the deletions may remain for a very long time, so that really hurts the performance. So uh, we have several optimizations for that, but uh, this is a very general problem. So uh, this also slows down the uh, range scans, like counting table uh, or any other uh, range scans. So uh, yes, so Roxy has several APIs called like a single delete or uh, delete range, but uh, uh, generally it's a, you, uh, when you using LSM database, uh, pay, pay attention to uh, uh, tombstones uh, overhead. Yeah. So the scanning too many tombstones degrades read performance. So uh, range scans hit these problems. And uh, if uh, consecutive tombstones can be millions if you are not dealing properly. And uh, so we added the metrics called how many uh, tombstones are scanned per second. So we have uh, several counters to expose that. And uh, yeah, so one of the common practices we adopted in production is uh, called deletion triggered compactions. Uh, it's called DTC. So when creating a SSD file, so if there are many tombstones, we trigger another compactions immediately to compacting them away to uh, wipe the many tombstones as quickly as possible. So Minox has a system variable to do that, and Roxavi has an API to do that as well. So it has a trade-off between the read performance and the compactions, but uh, this is one of the areas that we improved that. Yes? Yes. Yes, uh, the Mylox case is a bit uh, more complicated because we have several optimizations. But uh, yes, so if you update many times, uh, then yes, it, it has a both delete and put. So, uh, so, so there can be uh, many tombstones for that. Yeah, and uh, another part is uh, point lookups. So the range scan is generally the slowest compared to a B3, but the point lookups is as also has certain overheads. And uh, uh, so point lookup scores get, and so this is more expensive than P3. But uh, Roxy has an uh, internal memory, uh, the LRU uh, block cache structures. And if you uh, many call many get to uh, point lookups, then the block cache, the LRU contentions may be uh, problems. So, in we used to have that problem uh, before, and uh, we are optimizing that in progress. So there are several workarounds. So Roxy has an API called MultiGet, so which is uh, uh, getting uh, many records at once, so the, which is for uh, reducing that uh, point lookup, that LRU contentions overhead. And uh, in the MyRox specific case, so adding more secondary indexes is one of the workarounds. So many. Uh, point lookups by random reads is happening by a poor the, oh, query executions, like non-coupling index scans. Like non-coupling index scan means you do a range scans, then for each record, then doing a bunch of point lookups. So like one query does a million of point lookups. So if you have a wide covered uh, index structures, you can avoid that overhead. So that's one of the areas uh, we improve that. The last topic is uh, reliability. So uh, when using uh, Roxy in production, there are a bunch of uh, reliability uh, challenges. So you cannot uh, uh, completely avoid uh, use as a black box. So 
I talk about light stores or metrics towards the error handling, data consistency, the recovery on failures about that. So light store is probably the most common the performance, uh, the reliability problems in the LSM database, not just RockCV, but also uh, HBase. Uh, I, I hit similar issues that, uh, when operating HBase before. So light store can happen by a bunch of reasons, but generally it's when you write too fast. So LSM database is tend to uh, fast for light uh, performance because of the architectures. So the faster writes means uh, uh, you can write uh, very fast without uh, noticing the replication lag or so. So if you, but if you're writing too fast, then sooner than later you hit some problems uh, like uh, storing somewhere. So we have, Roxy has a bunch of the storing counters, but uh, common the storing reasons is uh, uh, level zero file uh, gets uh, filled or mem table gets filled. Uh, then uh, then uh, if you use a comp flash or compactions, it's slower than write ingestions, then you, you, uh, <laughs> you are hitting that uh, storing problems. Uh, there are several other uh, reasons like pending compactions or several compact range or bulk loading. So several other API usage may cause uh, storing, but uh, at least we have a counter for that. So when operating rock CVs, then pay attention to uh, uh, storing counters. Yep. So probably the most common uh, storing reason is a mem table or zero stores. So if all mem tables get full, then uh, you have to flash. But uh, you cannot flash mem table if the level zero files are full. So if these are uh, slower to flash on compact, then the lights are uh, stored. So there are several common workarounds, but so adding more L0 files or make memory flash faster, like using uh, no compression instead of a Z, Z leaf or Z standard. So that's one way. And uh, yeah, make L0 compactions faster. So you, using uh, this uh, LZ4 for the level zero, level one as well. Or start compaction earlier, but probably the easiest one is a tune application so that you don't write too fast. So. So there are many metrics to watch. So Roxy has uh, two important metrics uh, structures. One is uh, called statistics, like uh, stores, or so cache hit rate, or compaction bytes, how many compactions are run the past uh, second or so. And another con uh, data structure is called path context, that is uh, how many tombstones are scanned, or how many time spent for decompressing blocks. So there are several uh, counters available. Yeah, MyRox also exposes its metrics as an information schema or uh, status variables. And uh, yeah, the so most com configurations are dynamic. So RockCV has uh, database level and column level uh, configurations, but yeah, uh, since when hitting stores, then we want to uh, fix on uh, runtime so without stopping or starting databases. So. Uh, Majority of the configurations are now uh, kind of family level, level and you can change uh, configurations online. So we changed several parameters in productions in, online. So like one of the parameters was uh, block cache. So RockCV, it's kind of a you know, buffer pool. So when hitting a memory pressures, then we reduced uh, RockCV block cache to avoid the memory pressures. And uh, we sometimes increased L0 file limits to avoid L0 stores, or changing compression algorithm the, from a Z lib to Z standard, for example. So, yeah. There was one caveat that changing column family uh, parameter needs to member the flash. So if you change uh, many <laughs> column uh, family parameters at a uh, very short time, then <laughs> many SSD files are created in level zero uh, that uh, stores. Uh, <laughs> So that's a really uh, big side effect. So we are also working in progress to fix some of the corner issues. So errors. So it's apparently important for uh, handling errors, but uh, RockStab is uh, em uh, embedded key value store. So when hitting IO errors, for example, RockStab doesn't fail. So it's uh, how to behave that, it's, it's up to users. 
So, Rocksteady uh, returns errors on uh, callouts on I.O. errors, but it's, it's up to Rocksteady users to handle that. So, normally, uh, Rocksteady returns uh, I.O. errors, the error code to uh, uh, caller like MyRox so, uh, or other Rocksteady users. But typical failure handling uh, scenario is aborting, just aborting my uh, Rocksteady and let, let replication to fix that. Or return pushing error to users or retrying. But most of the time, so you shouldn't suppress errors, uh, right? So here's one example case, uh, it's a MyRox case. So IO error handling in MyRox. So as you know, probably knows that uh, MySQL adopts uh, uh, two PC uh, protocol between the binary log and log CV. So when uh, and, uh, it has a phase called a prepare and commit. <laughs> On the prepare phase, uh, MySQL does not not do anything for binlog. It writes to rockcv. But if hitting IO errors here, uh, we just return errors to the callers. But on the commit phase, uh, if failing any IO, then we abort MySQL server. Uh, because uh, at commit phase, any failures cannot be rolled back. So this is what, how we handle it in the MyLog in production. So, Writing to bin logs, so we have a parameter, MySQL has a parameter called bin log error actions, we set as a bot server. So uh, failure to write to bin log triggers a uh, instance abortions. And uh, if failing to write to log save is, at this stage the bin log is written. So if we roll back <laughs> log save is there, then uh, it, there is an inconsistency between the uh, bin log and log save. So we, we abort that in that case as well and uh, let replication to handle that. So the MySQL is replication. So if the instance fails on primary or replicas, then we rely on the, the healthy, as a healthy instance to fix that. Yes. Yeah. that example, the IO error decide is visible. Like XFS is an example. Yeah. So like, a temp, uh, yeah, the disk flow is one example. So we have some of the trial use cases like a remote storage. So the remote storage may fail the network errors as well. Yeah. Uh, unique constraints. I talked a bit earlier in this talk, but uh, the RocksDB API, uh, RocksDB has an API called put. So this does not check uniqueness. So if you want to check uniqueness, you have to uh, issue a, a, a function API called get. And if you rely on the transaction or locking API, so there is an API called get for update. So a, in MyRox case, so we, uh, we are trying to match in RayB. So, uh, so we call the get for update to lock the key. And if the key doesn't exist, then we do a put. The, but if the key exists, then we return errors, a unique uh, constraint uh, errors. But uh, default log behavior, behavior is, uh, it doesn't uh, check any uniqueness. So it's uh, depending on the users how to handle that. Yeah. So data consistencies. So uh, default, default log behavior was a bit casual. So log has a bunch of data structures called SST file, data files, or light head log, transaction log. The manifest, it's a kind of dictionary or blob files. But uh, we also have a several uh, copy operations, RocksDB backup engine. In the MyRox case, the MyRox out backup. In the recent Pericon uh, extra backup also supports the uh, MyRox case. So, but by default, so RocksDB allows to open database uh, even if missing some files, like it's, it's, uh, right at log files. So that may end up with the opening database with huge inconsistencies, right? because without the right head log, so you cannot do a uh, recovery. So uh, this part of the reason was uh, RocksDB has a dictionary file called manifest, but manifest file does not track uh, right head log uh, files by default. So towards more uh, strictly consistent uh, database uh, operations, so we recently added a feature called track and verify words in manifest, so that RocksDB dictionary is manifest files having a uh, right head log uh, with size information. So 
if you miss the copy writer log files, then it's making sure to refuse to open the database. So that's, that's very important from a correctness perspective. So, <coughs> and so, but there's a recovering on the database crash. So Roxib has a parameter called write ahead log the value recovery mode. So Roxib's default parameter is, is two. So actually, I recommend to use the two as well. So it's point in time recovery. So the meaning is when uh, trying referring to write ahead log, and if hitting uh, some write ahead log uh, corruptions or errors, like a partially written write ahead logs, so some incomplete finding or incomplete write ahead log entries, it stops recovering and opening the database. So, and the expectation is depending on the rep uh, recover from other uh, repli replicas, like primary instance or replica instances. So. Previously, the uh, we set up more strict operations, uh, not allowing any the right head log uh, truncations, so absolute consistencies. But uh, this had uh, some side effects that it's uh, refusing to open database, uh, even if it can uh, eventually be recovered. So like a kill minus nine to uh, kill the log CV or the seg faults. Uh, sometimes the log CV couldn't recover because of the absolute, the very strict consist uh, consistency check. So uh, our current recommendation is uh, using right head recovery mode too, so which is now default, uh, and track and uh, verify words in manifest. So by combining these two, uh, that's uh, pretty good enough to uh, guarantee consistencies. As far as you have a uh, uh, replica instances using replications elsewhere. Uh, last one, so I have uh, three minutes left, so uh, I very briefly talk about the snapshot conflict topics. So that was a major difference between InnoDB and RocksDB. So InnoDB natively supports uh, range log, it's gap log, so due to historical reasons for supporting statement-based binary logging. So that had a side effect that often caused record log contentions, but uh, from migration point of view, so this was a pain point because uh, RockCV transaction doesn't support a gap lock. So it means queries depending on the gap lock uh, doesn't work uh, to migrate to RockCV. So that's a important behavior changes. So RockCV's uh, transaction support is very similar to a Postgres style the support. So Postgres default isolation is read committed and it doesn't support gap log. But Postgres supports serializable and repeatable read. Uh, that behavior is when finding a snapshot conflicts uh, or transaction conflicts, uh, like a locking conflicts with the same record, uh, it returns a snapshot conflict errors. Uh, and so the returning errors to users. So in Ruby's behavior, it's, uh, it's keeping the users waiting so until the gap log is released. So when migrating from InnoDB to MyRox, then user, some users started seeing the snapshot conflict errors. So, and some services are not ready for to handle some uh, such errors. So we spent quite a lot of time to address and mitigate that snapshot conflict errors. So this was a, our story of that in migrating from InnoDB to MyRox uh, case. So one scenario was uh, switching from InnoDB to repeatable read to read committed and uh, MyRox read committed. So this was one migration scenarios that making sure to users don't see a, a consistency problems with uh, migrating to read committed. So we even added several features to uh, logging queries depending on the gap logs. So to see that uh, uh, what queries has to be evaluated. So once queries work with the InnoDB read committee, then the transitioning to a RockCV read committee was very straightforward. Uh, repeatable read to repeatable read was another direction. So uh, just no, not bothering time for that and just migrating to a re a repeatable read. So that means the users may see a snapshot conflict errors, which is our uh, MyRox implementation is called a dead rock. So, so it's returning snapshot conflict errors, but as far as the number of errors are very small, then applications may afford with that. So, that's, uh, so we have 
we migrated a bunch of InnoReady use cases to MyLox, and we took uh, both directions for uh, services. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so the summary is, yeah, LoxDB is a modern LSM database library that is years of production deployment. So we migrated the, our largest database, UDB, to MyLox in 2017. So it's uh, about five years ago. So since then, uh, we uh, evolved a lot about the MyLock side, but LoxDB itself has also evolved and uh, it improved both performance and reliability. And compared to B3, the LoxDB saves space and offers generally faster write performance, but the uh, read performance it, uh, suffers, so you need to uh, do a benchmarks on that. And uh, normally, it's, uh, pay attention to data index and filter block size and cache hit rate. And uh, utilize comp uh, compression or uh, compaction tuning options. And tombstones or L0 stores, uh, these are most common uh, performance problems of any LSM database. So pay attention to that. Yeah. But uh, in general, so, but LSM is a relatively new database in production. So uh, we, I, I'm going to publish this slide so that you can follow the data. So, but uh, yeah, we are uh, also in progress of making the rocks be so even better than that. Thank you. So. <laughs> yes, good question. ProbeDB? OK. So the question was the interaction with ProbeDB and RocksDB. Uh, Actually, the ProbeDB is a part of RocksDB, so which is an uh, option to open RocksDB database. So uh, we don't use uh, BlobDB inside MyLox because it's kind of anti-pattern to use large blob in MySQL. But uh, technically, you can uh, use with combine with uh, like transaction DB or the RocksDB uh, data structures. But there is a uh, pub, uh, blog, large blog post about uh, RocksDB BlobDB, so you can find more details. 